Well, hello there, friends, and welcome to the very first Christmas stocking mystery make along. I am so happy to be here today to teach you how to make this very cute Christmas stocking step by step throughout the day. If this is your first mystery make along, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to go through a couple little things you need to know so that way you can follow along without any trouble throughout the entire day. First things first, you want to make sure you get that free pattern. Now, the link is provided in the video description box right down there below. When you click that link, it will take you to the full details page. On that page, you will find everything regarding this mystery make along. At the very, 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 very bottom of the post, that is where Brianna and I will put the links to the free pattern every two hours on the release. So starting at 10 o'clock Eastern time, we will put a link to the crochet stocking, which you're learning how to make here today, and the knit stocking, which will take you to Brianna's website. This pattern will remain free on our websites forever. However, we also have an ad-free PDF available for purchase if you wish to do that as well. Throughout the Saturday of the actual event, we will release each section of the PDF as we go along. So you'll still only get each section throughout the day, but you will have everything in one little nice and tidy place that you can download directly from Ravelry. So it's pretty easy. If you wanna follow along with the free pattern, great. Click the link in the video description box below and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the blog post and there you will find your instructions for each time dur during the day. So at 10 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. Okay, so that covers how you get the free pattern. What about the materials? For the crochet stocking, you need six different colors of worsted weight yarn. You'll also notice I put three different hook sizes on there, and that's not because you will use all three different hook sizes for your stocking. It's so that you had all three different hook sizes available to you to achieve gauge. Now, is gauge super important on this? Absolutely not. But if you wanna make sure your stocking is the same size as mine, you wanna make sure that you do get gauge, okay? Along with the yarn and the hook, I do recommend stitch markers, a good pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. And then optional purchase or a, uh, an optional item would actually be a pom-pom maker, okay? So that's what you need for the crochet stocking. For the knit stocking, you can find those details on that blog post as well. If you, if you haven't put it together yet, if you're ever in doubt, always go back to that blog post. All the information you need is always right there, okay? So for today, oh my gosh, okay. So I shouldn't say for today, for this video, we want to go ahead and grab our color A and our crochet hook. Color A is the color you want for the cuff, the heel, and the toe of your stocking. Choose the color in your six colors that you want for that portion and place a slip knot directly onto your hook. Now, I did use a five millimeter hook to achieve gauge for my stocking and gauge would be 13 single crochets equals four inches. Once you get that slip knot on your hook, go ahead and chain the number of chains listed in the pattern, okay? So we wanna go ahead and chain the number of chains listed in the pattern. I'm gonna do a smaller version here in this pattern so that way I can actually get through these rounds without any trouble. Once you've chained the correct number of chains, that's when we will jump into row one of the cuff. Row one begins with the single crochet in the second chain from hook. So insert your hook into the second chain from hook and work a single crochet. Now we're gonna work single crochets all the way to the end of your chain, okay? So we wanna work single crochets into each chain all the way to the end. Now the cuff portion really isn't super complicated, but I did include the hanging loop in the instructions for the cuff and it might be the first time you've ever done something like this. So I wanna make sure I get to that part and show you how to do it. But for the majority of the cuff, it's gonna be done very quickly. There's no way you're gonna need a full two hours for the cuff. So 
hopefully you'll be able to get this cuff done and then you'll still have time to go grab some breakfast or pick up uh, your kids from sports or whatever it may be and you'll be able to move along just fine. When we get to the other hours, now those ones will take you a little bit longer, but here at the cuff, I'm, I'm starting you out a little bit slow, so it should be nice and relaxing and comfortable. If I know most of you, you'll probably start two or three stockings in this time frame because I know you. Okay, when you get to the end of all of your chain stitches, we want to join to make this in the round. So in the very first single crochet over there, I'm going to rotate it around, and because yours is longer, you want to make sure you do not accidentally twist this, okay? Make sure it's straight so that way when you bring it around, we're going to join with the slip stitch into that first single crochet. So there's my first single crochet. I'm going to go into it. Let me get that string out of the way. Yarn over and pull through, okay? So now I have a ring. Now, yes, the bottom of my ring here is split, but that's fine. I can use my tail to weave this together. And you might be saying, why didn't you just join the chain at the start and then begin to work in the round? I hate doing that because my chain always gets twisted. So I prefer to work my first round and then just seam up the clothes um, at the bottom of the stitches later. So there's method to my madness. All right, so here we are at the end of row one. After we join, we chain one and we turn. This entire stocking, when we're working in rounds, they are turned round, so you want to turn your work, okay? Now we're going to single crochet into the first single crochet, right here, single crochet in the first single crochet, and in each single crochet around. So we will still maintain our stitch count, so the stitch count you had at the end of round one, and yes, even though they are turned rounds, they are still rounds, they are not called rows. You will have the same stitch count when you get to the end of this round. When you come to the end of the round, you will slip stitch into the first single crochet you did, and then here's where it's a little bit different. So we slip stitch, now I wanna chain 20. I'm going to chain less for my little sample here, okay? Once you've done that, you're going to come back to where you did that slip stitch and you will slip stitch into that point yet again, okay? And it's at this point then we would chain one in turn, but I want to give you a little tip since you're watching the video here in case this is something that interests you. My friend Robin, who by the way designed this shirt and I absolutely love it, it's one of my favorite shirts and I felt very appropriate to wear it for a day where I'm going to be crocheting all day long with you. Robin likes to add slip stitches around the chain that she just created so that way it is a little bit more secure. So what she does is she turns her work and working into the back bump of the chain she will work slip stitches. So she's going to the back bump and she'll do a slip stitch. So when she was tech editing my pattern, she suggested this and I was like, you know what? I'm going to add that into the video as an option that people can do, but I'm not gonna make it a mandatory thing because it's not mandatory. The chain itself will hold the weight of the stocking, um, especially since it's incorporated into the cuff itself. But this is just one of those things that it adds just that little bit of extra touch here. And if you'll notice that sometimes I'll use the actual hook to get into that back bump. It helps me get into it. Make sure I'm not splitting my yarn. You don't want to do that. That's not very pretty. And then come up. So this part takes just a little bit extra time because it's a little tricky working into those chains just like we all know, because it takes extra time whenever we're working into chains, right? Always working into those chains takes a little bit of extra time. And then don't forget the last one, okay? So you can see there, it just makes that chain just a little bit thicker. And so then what she would do now is, so we're still on the wrong side of our fabric, right? So she would slip stitch once again into that same spot, chain one, turn, and then here's the tricky thing. 
this chain that we did, this loop, you want to kind of hold it to the back, okay? Because we are going to work around it, like around into the front of it, I should say. I don't want to work around it. I want to work in front of that loop that we just created to continue on working in my rounds. So I've already done my chain one and turn, so now I'm just doing single crochets all the way around. Does that make sense, you guys? So let me recap. I made the loop. I did slip stitches around the loop. I chained one and I turned. And then I pushed the loop out of the way so it's really to the inside of my cuff here. See how it's into the inside? So that way I could work the stitches in front of it. All right, so it's on the inside, it just sticks out of the way. And now I also single crochet all the way around on this round. And again, you don't have to do those slip stitches, but it after the slip stitches, or if you don't do the slip stitches, it's the same motion. You push the loop out of the way and you carry on to the right side round. Might be a little tricky at first. Don't worry, you'll get it, I promise. Okay. Here we go. When I get to the end of my round, I want to make sure I join with my slip stitch to the first single crochet I did, right? I'm just going to skip over all of that. Just join with the slip stitch to the first single crochet. Once you join with the slip stitch, you then will just carry on working the rounds to finish off the cuff. But let's take a look a little bit at what we've done. I want you to understand really well what we've done. As I mentioned, this is the start. We'll use our tail to seam that closed. This is where we are right now. And so this is the front of our fabric. If we look inside our cuff, we'll see this hanging loop. Now, imagine if this were just tilted down just like so, this loop would poke up from the inside, okay, to hang on our mantle or on our stair steps or whatever it is, or wherever you will be uh, hanging your stocking from. You have the loop already incorporated. And this is where the stocking will flow down from. Okay, so that's why I put the loop on the second row in because now it'll hold that weight. It holds the weight. Okay, all right, you see how that works? Now, all you need to do is carry on with the next several rows for the cuff. And I will let you know that this cuff section, you could make it a little bit longer than what I designed it to be. It's totally up to you. It'll just make your stocking a little bit longer than it is listed in the pattern right now. But if you're one of those people that likes a really long cuff, you could add a little bit more to this section should you choose if you have enough yarn to do so. And that's it for part one. Go ahead, get started. Make sure you share with me on social media. Use hashtag Marley Bird, hashtag Brianna K, or hashtag Christmas Stocking M-A-L. We would love to see your work and smash your like button. If you have any questions or you want some moral support or you're one of those people that likes to be a cheerleader, we would love to have you join us over in the Marley's Minions Facebook group. That is where all of the action is happening for this mystery make along. So it's a lot of fun over there. We'll be doing random giveaways throughout the day. So if you are part of Facebook and not part of the Marley's Minions group, you need to join us. That link is provided in the video description box below, or it can also be found on the blog post that I have been directing you to throughout this entire video. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.